So we've taken a look at the first part of our structural member properties and we found that the moment of inertia is totally related to the shape or the geometry of a beam. And now let's take a look at something that is totally related to the material of a beam. Uh, that's called the modulus of elasticity and it has the symbol E. Um, it is commonly referred to other things such as uh, elastic modulus, uh, elasticity, and so on. Uh, all those terms are interchangeable. And sometimes you'll hear me in class just use the word modulus. Uh, and if I do that, this is what I mean. I'm talking about E. So a lot like the um, I, or moment of inertia, it is a measure of stiffness. And also like moment of inertia, the higher the value of E, the stiffer it is, in other words, it's going to uh, not want to bend as much the higher it gets. The lower the value for E, the greater it is going to bend. All right, so let's take a look at an example. So if I have two beams, uh, beam A, beam B, uh, one is fur, Douglas fur, and the other is plastic. Um, and you can see in the table below, they have the same length, width, height, uh, and thus area. And we remember from the first part in our presentation that that must mean they have the same moment of inertia, I. Well, if they have the same moment of inertia, do we really expect that if we apply a force that they would have the same movement or deflection? Common sense tells us that that is not true. And if that's not true, then there must be some other way, uh, some other variable to express uh, and determine the differences between the materials. That is what the modulus of elasticity is. It is totally related to the materials. So what distinguishes then uh, between beam A and beam B? Uh, because the I is the same, everything is the same except the materials. And in the, uh, the next slide, again, which voiceover will not work, it just shows you a real quick simulation of what the deflection would look like uh, in a computer model if we applied the same force at the same place to beam A and beam B. Then we'll come back around and we'll do a, an example calculation. So we could see then that beam B, the plastic beam, deforms greater, deforms more, right? It bends more. And that's pretty much what we would expect, I think. So why is that? I is the same, everything's the same. Well, obviously it's because of the materials and the, the variable, the property that we use to express that is the modulus of elasticity. And one easy way for us uh, other than stress or strain, which was uh, in the definition slide on the first part. We haven't gone over those things yet. Those have, uh, each one of those is a whole entire class in college. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to look at deflection, or in this case, delta max is the uh, symbol and how we look at deflection. Deflection is just the amount of movement and it's measured in terms of like inches or millimeters typically. And the things that affect the deflection are, as you would think, it's you know, how big is that load or force? You know, how much weight are we putting on that board? Um, how long that board is? Specifically though, and this is one of the gotchas, it's not necessarily the length of the beam or the board. It is the length between the supports of the board. I want to, uh, that's one of those gotchas. You're going to see on a quiz or a test, uh, I'm going to give you a length of the beam and I'm probably going to give you a length between supports. Make sure you use the length between the supports. That is the right math to use. And then also the modulus of elasticity and the moment of inertia affect how much deflection there is on a beam.
So if we take a look at uh, the two beams in question, the plastic and the Douglas fir, uh, here we have the formula for the deflection or delta max. And you can see that on top, those are the things that directly affect. In other words, when we increase those things on the top, the deflection increases. And that's kind of common sense. Let's think about that for a second. Uh, if I have more force on a board uh, or on a beam, it's going to deflect more, right? Uh, and you've kind of experienced this, and maybe you've never really thought about it, but if I increase the length between supports, that also means I'm going to have more deflection. It's not going to be as stiff. Um, conversely, those things on the bottom, on the right-hand side, as I increase those, that's going to decrease the deflection. So the higher my E, or higher my modulus of elasticity, the lower my deflection, the less it's going to move. Same thing for I, moment of inertia. The higher that value, the less it's going to deflect. So let's take a, a look at an example and calculate those. First, let's take a look at beam A, and, uh, and below you see the, uh, all the values for beam A. And let's assume that we have a load of 250 pounds. Um, here in this ideal example, and I stress it's ideal, we've changed 8 feet into 96 inches. Again, I want to stress your, that is not real world. That is ideal. Uh, you want to make sure that you use the length between the spans or L. Uh, so we plug in 1.8 million uh, for E, and that might seem pretty big, but that's a real value. And then also uh, 20.8 inches to the fourth. When we do that math, we find that the deflection is just a little bit more than a tenth of an inch. And that's really right. Deflections are very, very small. Uh, right now you are probably sitting in a chair. And obviously the cushion is deflecting, but also the legs of the chair or the wheels of the chair, whatever kind of chair you are sitting in, those are pushing on the floor and deflecting the floor. Very, very little. Probably on the order of, of one to two thousandths of an inch, if even that. But it is deflecting. Uh, and there is absolutely a way to calculate that using equations similar to what we have here. So let's take a look at board B, the plastic board. Uh, again, we see all the values, uh, we plug them in, and we come up with a deflection of a little over half an inch. Well, let's compare those. And does that make sense? So for beam A, the wood beam, we got 0.12, and beam B, the plastic beam, we got a deflection of a half inch. Now, let's kind of do a sanity check. Does that kind of, uh, does, does that uh, jive with what our experience would tell us? I think it does. And so let's back up from there. Why are they different? What makes them different? They're the exact same dimensions, the exact same length, the exact same force. The only thing that's different is the material. And in that equation, the only difference is E. So E is related to the material itself. So what we've learned are two different ways to uh, look at uh, beam deflection and uh, properties, both of which uh, have an impact on the stiffness or measure stiffness. One, I, is related to the shape of the object, and the other, E, is related to the material of the object. That concludes the presentation for 2.1.2.